so Such a good feeling to know the day is mine. I've got a chance to be all that I can be. It's going to be a good day. Well, hello and welcome once again to New Beginning in Christ Ministries. I guess, I guess we could just do that and just put it in and edit it each time. Cause yeah, we can do that. Way, <laughs> yeah. God, we You're do right. want to say Merry Christmas Merry to everybody Merry Christmas to you there. all. And uh, I, I'm so glad that we're able to say Merry Christmas. Mm. Not Happy Holidays, but Merry Christmas. And uh, ever, I'm, I've kind of gone out of my way in the last couple of weeks to make sure that I say Merry Christmas to everybody. That's right, that's and right. whether they answer me or not really doesn't make any mm-mm, difference. Mm-mm. And uh, and I've got a lot of people that don't, but, uh, uh, and I've heard people say, yeah, okay. You know, and they don't say Merry Christmas back, but that's okay. I'm going to celebrate the birth of Christ. Me too. And uh, I wish that everybody <laughs> could and would celebrate this time as the birth of Christ, I realize that uh, you can't save them all. No. Uh, Jesus, even Jesus couldn't save them all because God never does anything against your will. I like it God. that Jesus made a way for everyone to be saved, That's but it. they don't choose it. I like it. that, yeah. yeah. He made a way. He made a way. It's up to us whether we choose to follow that way or not. And <coughs> we uh, recently, we've talked about uh, of course, sins, and everybody knows about the Ten Commandments and, and yeah. how to do right and, and all those things, praise God. But so often what takes place is that uh, the sin is omission. Mm. We fail to do everything that the Lord set forth for us to do. So Now, I know that this is closer to Christmas, but we've kind of done our Christmas show, you know, like the last yeah, two weeks, and God. everybody else is doing it, so we're just going to go on with teaching. Yeah, and actually, about the time that this film is being uh, shown, uh, Carolyn's going to be out in North Carolina. Praise yep, God. yep. And uh, that's important, praise God, because, you know, every day uh, we come in contact with new and different people. Mm-hmm. And every day we should see that as an opportunity to talk about Jesus Christ. And you know, James, the age group that we hang out with and that we <laughs> see, you know, let's face it, uh, most of them, we could get a call the next day and say oh, they're no longer yeah. here. Uh, and we do sometimes. I remember Betty and all of them, you know, but uh, make the best of every day. You know, Christmas is a time to make you remember what's important. It kind of brings you closer to it family. It, to me, Christmas is a time of giving. Yes. Uh, and th- what does that mean? It means that we give of ourselves uh, to one another. Mm-hmm. Uh, if you see a need, it's a, we should be doing this all year long. But if we see a need, we should be uh, answering that need. We see it as an opportunity to be Christ-like. I think we, we make a little extra effort. And I think we make a little extra time to do the, the around Christmas time. We get a, I don't know, it's just, we just remember Jesus and all the love that he, tremendous love he had for us. Yeah, and we need to remember Jesus all year round. Praise God. Well, yeah. And make sure that we worship him throughout the year. And talking about that, mm-hmm. Sister Carolyn and I, uh, here in our chapel, our facility where we film, uh, every third Saturday of each month at 1 o'clock, uh, mm-hmm. a bunch of us, I can say old fogies. <laughs> <laughs> and a lot of the, it's all local people yeah, too. Yeah, get together and we do music. Mm-hmm. Uh, we like to do hymns and gospel music and things, but we do a, a little of everything, praise God. Because remember this, folks, we're here to bring sinners to Christ. Mm-hmm. So don't exclude sinners. Don't exclude people that don't believe the way you do. That's we're, that's the ones we're trying to reach. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it, it's, I, I use this for an example. I have some, I've had friends in my life that I know were not living right. That doesn't mean I just cut them off. Yeah. I try to be friends with them and show, let them see how I live and how I, I love the Lord and let his light shine through me. That's the same with people who, um, homosexuals, 
You know, I don't agree with their lifestyle, but I have known some. People who believe in Santa Claus, the Easter Bunny, it's all yeah. the same. Yeah. It's all, right. all the same. You just got to love the friend, don't love what they, yeah, don't worship what they what do. hate what they do, but love the person. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. And I know if you've watched a lot of our broadcasts, you, you would think that, well, Brother James is, hates homosexuals. No, mm -mm. Brother James loves homosexuals. I hate the sin. Yeah. Uh, and that's, listen, some of my absolute closest friends that I've ever had in this world was a homosexual. And, and well, what can I say? You watched him come to Christ. Yes, I did. That's I the great thing. I watched him come to the Lord. I watched him be t totally healed of AIDS. Not because of, of me, but because of the grace of God. Amen. And his willingness to listen to what Jesus said. Mm -hmm. And when he, he had faith to receive and believe what Jesus said, and because he did, he was healed. Amen. And because he was healed, his belief system became strong. And we were friends and still are. He had a heart attack a few years back and passed away. But... I still look back on the times when, when we had conversations together, and he would share with me why he was a homosexual. Mm -hmm. And he shared with me that it was a spirit that had come on him because he had been uh, abused as a small mm -hmm. child. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and I... I have seen no reason not to agree because so many people today have been abused by friends and family when they were small children yes. and may or may not even be aware of it. And that spirit is passed on. Now, that's exactly how he told me that. And that, praise God, I have no reason not mm -hmm. to understand and believe that. <coughs> and then I've been in meetings where the Lord just, I mean, just had me hug up on, uh, on gay people. And all why? Because I love the person. I hate the sin. And that's the way God is toward us. God's exactly that way. He, he loves us so much that He gave us His Son. That's the mm -hmm. spirit of giving at Christmas. He gave us His yes. Son that we might find a way Amen. where there seems to be no way. Without Christ, you, there's no way you're going to make it, folks. Can I there's, say that God yeah. looked past the sin to us? He's yeah. seen us. He's yeah. seen the sin. But he said, I got to reach them. I got to send something that'll, that'll go past that sin, which is Jesus' blood. That's right. It's yeah. the only thing. Common sense wise says you that as scripture dictates, that God cannot be in the presence of sin. Mm -mm. Let me change that. Sin there you go. cannot be in the presence of God. Yeah, nothing has control over God. Yeah, <laughs> yeah right. God. Yeah. Sin cannot be in the presence of God. Amen. So in order for you and me to be in the presence of God, and that's where the blessings are. That's it. That, what's that old that's thing? That's, you get under the spout where the <laughs> blessings run out, praise yep. God. In order for us to be in the presence of God, we have to have our sin covered. And that covering that, that only God will accept is the blood of Jesus Christ. And it covers us so completely that when we walk in that blood, now we can be in Amen. the presence of God. Amen. And we can receive the blessings that he has for us. And that's where Carolyn and I are. Uh, praise God, we love people, but we hate the sin. Mm -hmm. And the reason I hate the sin so much is because when a person is in sin, they cannot be blessed. They cannot be in the presence of God. Mm -hmm. And that's where the blessings are. Jesus himself pointed and he said, it's God, I can only do what my father tells me to do. He said, I can I only can go where my father tells me to go. Go ahead. And speak. You can only speak. That's it. And so wow. we as Christians have an obligation to be as much like Jesus as we possibly can. 
And that means that we must do as Jesus did, and what Jesus did was the, the will of the Father. I've heard so many songs <coughs> say that Jesus, is, he made a way. He is the bridge. The Bible says he is the door to God. He, you don't just stop at the door. You go through that door. That's right. And that's what Jesus did. God made a way through his son for us to come before God. God the Father. And that and that's what he that that's why we have to look at Jesus. He is the Son of God. He made a way for us. He gave it all. That's right. And here's the other thing too. Uh, Jesus is not going to open the door for you. Uh, mm -mm. When you see paintings of Jesus outside and he's knocking, he's knocking so that you will let him in. Yeah. The, if you look at all the pictures, there is no knob on the door. That's interesting, ain't it? Jesus can't open the door and enter in. You have to open the door and, and allow him, him to come in. Amen. And that's what it's all about. That's what, And that's what Christmas is, folks. For God so loved the world that he mm -hmm. gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish. That's an important word. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Praise God. But have eternal life. And... and we're going to start at the first of the year, praise God, on a new study series, and we're going to go into questions uh, and areas of maybe gray areas, praise God. For the Bible is very clear about how things are, mm -hmm. uh, if we will just read the whole Bible, <laughs> praise God. Absolutely, anyway, praise absolutely. God. <laughs> we, I, I just want, like again, I want to say Merry Christmas to everybody out there and our friends and Different churches we go to, and uh, people say, well, don't you just have your church? No, we have Christ church. We believe that you should be able to worship Jesus Christ the same way anywhere you go. That's right. You should be able to say amen, raise your hands, glorify him, sing praises to him, make a loud noise on the high-sounding cymbals, praise God, whatever it says. And believe me, when we play, we make a loud <laughs> noise. Oh, once you mention that we go we go to every Friday night at six o'clock. The whole group meet at the senior club. There's about ten to twelve musicians, I yeah, guess. Yeah, there in Harrison. Yeah, that's and uh, everything from a harmonica, <laughs> dobro, banjo, bass, guitars, uh, all kinds of boards, stuff. Washboards, praise God. Now we don't have one currently, but I heard somebody was going to bring one and yeah, play it. Yeah, I'm, I'm God. interested in seeing that. <laughs> uh, and but we enjoy coming together and and. We Having a good time. People just to come. Just, just come, to come and listen. And listen be you don't want to play or sing. Apart. But if you do want to play and sing, come on out. Yeah, at, uh, we get there together at 6 o'clock. Mm -hmm. Every Friday night, yeah, unless it falls on a holiday or something. It's over by the, uh, across from Edwards, yep. grocery across the interstate. Yeah, there. Not You'll the, see it yeah, over there. The God. senior come club. And, yeah. And uh, we also go to the nursing homes. We go to the retirement homes. We go Assisted to. Assisted livings. Uh, where? Assisted livings. Assisted livings, praise God. I, I still don't quite know the, the difference. difference in all that, praise God, but I understand nursing. There he is. Praise God. Yeah. And we go to individuals, and uh, mm -hmm. we pray with individuals. We pray together. Go to different churches. That's right. And we respect one another, yes. praise God. Uh, if you don't believe in our Jesus, that's okay. We're going to work on you until you do, praise <laughs> God. And like we've said so many times before, everybody needs a sinner friend in their life mm -hmm. that you can work on until you get him saved and then or her. And once they're saved, then go get you another there one. There you praise go. Praise God. And just, keep, <laughs> just keep going on. Praise God. Well, we're going to get into some music. But once again, mm -hmm. we uh, if you have prayer requests, send them to us. Yeah. I believe in healing prayer. Carolyn believes in healing. I believe what this Bible says. I believe in laying on hands. I believe in anointing with oil. But all must be done in mm -hmm. faith. There should be some expectation when you pray for somebody. Not just, not just praying for them and hoping, well, mm -hmm. well we're going to do this because that's what we do. But we need to, to do the things the Bible calls Expect. on us to do. With faith, ex with expectation. Well, did, was it Paul or who was it said, when you've done all you can do, stand? Yeah, having stood, 
yeah. now stand. Now stand. So do all you can. Yeah. Prepare yourself and study and, and have a relationship with God. Do all you can. And then when you've done all you can. Now wait on God. But don't walk away. You no. Say, well, I tried that and it didn't mm -mm. work. No, that's, see, that's, there's no faith in that statement. Mm -mm. No. The faith of the statement is that because God said so, it's going to happen. Yeah, he said don't grow weary. Yeah. Don't grow tired. Well, in, oftentimes. In, in faith. Yeah, we're, our faith is tried. Right. And uh, it, let's face it, folks, you're gonna, your faith is going to be tested. I mean, even in school, you're tested. Mm. And uh, praise God. So expect God to test your faith because he needs to know that you're going to make it. No, you need to know that when you pray, things yes. happen. It makes a difference. That's the difference. Praise God. And that once is. you find that out, then you'll find yourself growing mm -hmm. in that mm -hmm. faith and doing things that people say, well, you, you can't do that. Well, sure I can. <laughs> yeah. God. Oh, yes. That? God said so. God's not a liar. He's not man that he should lie. Mm -mm. Praise God. But we have the power within us through Christ Jesus to do everything that has ever been done in this Bible. Uh, say it again. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. That's it. Praise God. All things. All. He said Praise all things. Well, we're going to go to some music right here. Praise God. And, and uh, I hope you'll enjoy it. And we're going to start even today with some teaching. Yes. Uh, looking at things and just going especially with Paul's writings in the New Testament. Mm -hmm. And... Get your Bible out. We're probably going to start in Romans. Yep, get your pencil and paper and, and your Bible. And we're just kind of going to go not verse by verse, but maybe subject by subject. Maybe that's I like what that. we need to talk about. I like about. that. Praise God. And questions and answers and things that people have questions about. And just see what God, through man, has to say to the world. So, without any more hesitation, we're going to go right to our music. And we'll be right back. Hello, Lord, God. Welcome back. <laughs> we're going to try to sing a few songs for you this morning and hope you'll be blessed. Praise God. We just enjoy singing for the Lord. Uh, you pray for my voice. Hallelujah. Amen. <laughs> and, you know, go ahead. Well, the Bible says, make a joyful noise unto the Lord. All right. Well, they, we picked out some songs so that y'all could sing with us today. Help us out. This is heaven's jubilee. Right. Praise God. Some glad morning we shall see Jesus in the air. Coming after you and me. Joys ours to share. What rejoicing there will be when the saint shall rise. Let him fall at Jubilee yonder in the sky. Oh, what singing! Oh, what shouting! On that happy morning when we all shall rise. Oh, what glory! Hallelujah! When we meet our blessings. Savior in the sky. Seems that now I almost see all the same thing. Rising for that jubilee that is just ahead. In the twinkling of an eye, change with them to be. All the living saints to fly to that jubilee. Oh, what sing! Oh, what shouting! On that happy morning when we all shall rise. Oh, what glory, hallelujah, when we meet our blessed Savior in the sky. When with all the heavenly hosts we begin to sing, singing in the Holy Ghost, now the heavens will ring. Millions there will join that song with them we shall be. Praise the Christ through ages long, heaven to believe. Oh, what singing, oh, what shouting, on that happy morning when we all shall rise. Oh, what glory, hallelujah, when we meet our blessed Savior in the sky. One more time. Oh, what singing, oh, what shouting,
graves open up and people are going to come up out of that ground and they're on their way heaven bound. And then in a twinkling of an eye, those of us that are still here are going to go right behind them. Praise God. I like it because it says that first the dead in Christ arise. Amen. Woo! You know, Hallelujah. you can take that a couple of ways because we're all dead. Even though we're walking around right now, we're dead in Christ. We're That's dead right. to sin. Praise God. If you know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, you're dead to sin right mm. now. You've already died. Praise God. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> Hallelujah. But we're still here trying to do the will of God and getting more folks saved. Now Praise we're just going to live forever. Try to take as many of them with us as we can. Hallelujah. We're going to do a song that you know, I'm pretty sure, The Unclouded Day. Y'all need to keep your hymnals close to you when you watch our show. Amen, we did. We had a wonderful time. Amen. Oh, they tell me of a home far beyond the skies. They tell me of a home far away. Oh, they tell me of a home where no storm clouds rise. right here is called Just a Little Talk with Jesus. We don't get to sing this very often. I know. I, when I saw the song, I said, you know, I really want to sing this song today because, like you say, we don't sing it very often, but I love the words. Just a little yeah. talk with Jesus will make you know, it right. We need to sing more of the old songs. I like them. A lot of contemporary music out there and anything that praises Jesus, I like, but somehow the old songs get in your heart and you they seem They're to draw simple. you to the, far, to the cross. They draw you up to the altar. Praise God. Hallelujah. Well, there's not as much noise going on. It's simple and it's clear. You can understand it. I like that. Amen. Praise the Lord. Sing it with us. Yeah. Just a little talk with Jesus. I once was a lost in sin, but Jesus took me in. And then a little light from heaven filled my soul.
lives by passing through without a ray of cheer. And then a cloud of doubt may hide the light of day. The mist of sin may rise and hide the starry sky. But just a little talk with Jesus clears the way. Have a little talk with Jesus. Let us Tell him all about our troubles. He will hear our faintest cry. He will answer by and by. Now when you feel a little prayer will turn it. And you know a little fire is burning. Find a little talk with Jesus makes it right. I may have doubts and fears. My eyes be filled with tears. But Jesus is a friend who watches day and night. I go to him in prayer, he knows my every prayer. And just a little talk with Jesus makes it right. Have a little talk with Jesus, tell him all about our troubles. He will hear our faintest cry, he will answer by and by. Feel a little prayer will turn it, know a little fire is burning. Find a little talk with Jesus makes it right. since you just got down on your knees you know get up in the morning early and just get on your knees and have a talk with Jesus Christ you know he wants to talk to you praise God and if you'll just sit down and listen to him and go to him and open your ears your spiritual ears Jesus will talk to you praise God you can he'll, hear him. he'll tell you everything that you ever wanted to know every question you ever wanted to ask he'll keep no secrets from you praise God and if you've got problems out there today, folks, you need to go to Jesus, and he'll tell you exactly what to do to, to get over those problems. He'll be there with you yes, to go through will. them with you. He'll never leave you alone. He said, I'll never leave or forsake you. Praise the Lord. This is a song Carolyn does. Uh, Too many we, times, yeah. yeah. We enjoy it. Praise the Lord. Too many times we just uh, try to do things on our own. Tell them about it. When all we got to do is just throw up our hands and say, Lord, I can't do nothing about this situation. Whatever it is in your life, whether it's sickness, financial, your family, your lost loved ones, we really can't do much about it. We can ask God to come into their life. We can intercede for them. We can pray for them. We can have faith for them to get them in. And then once they're in, then we can pull together to pray some more in. That's the way it works. Amen. You know, he's talking about that. We're supposed to do what we can. And when, when we do things, we do it in faith. It doesn't mean that we just go out and sit down someplace and wait for the government to give us money. It means that we go out in faith and we get a job and we take what we make and we trust God with it. Yeah. And Come God on. is able to multiply it back to us more than enough so that we can meet all of our needs, all of our financial needs. So we do what we can, and God does the rest. Well, like this ministry. If you want a part of this ministry, you don't have to be able to sing or play. Just send money, a donation to this ministry, and therefore you're a part. Every soul that we reach out to, that we touch, you will have had a part in that. Amen. That's the way it works. That's part of the labor. Yeah. That's part of the way. Praise God. Go ahead, Sister Kelly. Amen. When everything is gold. I was in the wrong key. When everything is going wrong, I got my back to the wall. Satan's coming on strong. He really wants me to fall. Sin's trouble my way. Part of his plan by myself I can't win. So I just throw up my hands. Oh, I just throw up my hands. I'm gonna praise the Lord. I won't give up because I'll stand. It's infallible word. God sees my hands praise. Yes, he comes down here in heaven to my praise. Can relate. I am. 
I'm what I'm facing a try. I got two ways I can go. I can still wear a smile.
welcome back, praise God. Yes. And uh, we're going to get into this study and see what Paul has to say. You know, it's so interesting that the so much of the New Testament, other than the Gospels, is written by Paul. And uh, the story of Paul and how he was uh, delivered, if you will, from religion into the grace of God. Amen. And I oh, think that's so important today. He was in a world religion. Yes, he was. He was. And Paul in his writings states that of all the people that he knew, he was the most religious uh, person. I mean, he's the one that kept the law. Yeah. Uh, above everybody else. And he goes on to say that all that I did before in keeping the law was as dung uh, unto him. He's a perfect example that no matter how much you believe in something, if it's false, it's false. That's right. You're exactly right, Sister Carla. And so we want to, since so much is of what is written by Paul to the church, we want to emphasize these things because in no way did Paul ever, ever, uh, differ in his belief than what Jesus spoke or what the other apostles uh, said. Praise God. Some people try to say that, well, Paul had a different gospel. No, he did not. Praise God. He was uh, selected, if you will, by God. And uh, God loves us so much. He looked, it, 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 what it tells me, Sister Carolyn, is it, no matter how religious you are, no matter how sinful you are, God can use you. That's true. And That's he true. will take that which was in your life, he will change it, and he will use it for his purposes. Absolutely. And that's what we want. We want to be used, praise God, of the Lord, and and be as much like God as we possibly can, and and. Paul, by his own admission, said of all people, of all people that, that were so against grace and then came out so much for grace. So let's begin, praise God. Uh, hallelujah. The Apostle Paul uh, is the sixth in the chronological order of Paul's letters, or the word epistle, if you will. Uh, it was written from Corinth during the apostles third visit to that city and you can find that in 2 Corinthians 13 and 1 and it was written in 60 AD and the letter from Paul this letter has its occasion in the intention of the apostles soon to visit Rome in other words he was telling the church praise the Lord at Corinth uh, that he was getting ready to to go to Rome, praise God. Why? Because there were persecution of Christians, praise God. Uh, naturally, he would wish to announce before his coming the distinctive truths which had been revealed to and through him. He would desire the Christians in Rome to have his own statement of the great doctrines of grace so bitterly assailed everywhere by the legalistic teachers. Let me emphasize today that the legalistic teachers are still alive and well and coming against the grace of Jesus Christ. The theme of Romans is the gospel of God. And we're going to read that in verse 1 and 1. The very wildest possible designation of the whole body of redemption, truth, for it is he with whom is no respect of persons, and who is not the God of the Jews only, but of the Gentiles also. I'm going to stop there for just a moment, Sister Carolyn, and because there are people that say, well, God's a God of the Jews. Now, God is a God of everywhere. That's right. Of everything. And he proved it when he sent Jesus to die for everybody. That's right. Now, if you remember, Jesus was sent to the Jews only. Uh, it's not until we get to the apostles that we find the outreach to the Gentiles. Mm -hmm. Now, 
Jesus was sent so that everybody, no respecter of persons, everybody could be saved. Yeah. Jew, Gentile, Bonds basically, man. that's all there is here is Jew or Gentile. That's it. <laughs> But uh, so what a, what a magnificent, we're talking about Christmas, what a magnificent gift to give to us, praise God, is that gift that, of salvation. Yeah. Praise that we might serve God, praise God. Let me get back to this, okay. praise the Lord. <clears throat> Accordingly, all the world is found guilty and a redemption is revealed as wide as the need upon the alone condition of faith. What, do it, what, do, what does it take for me to be saved? I have to have faith. I, in other words, I have to believe that God is a rewarder of those who believe and that Jesus Christ is the cost or the sacrifice that's necessary for us to have faith in God. Not only does Romans embody in the fullest way the doctrines of grace in relation to salvation, but in three remarkable chapters, chapters 9, 10, and 11, the great promises to Israel are reconciled with the promises concerning the Gentiles. And the fulfillment of the former shown to await the completion of the church and coming of the deliverer out of Zion. Praise God. And we find that in chapter 11. Uh, and we're going to read that. Praise God. The key phrase in Romans is the righteousness of God. Wow. Praise God. So we're going to look at this and we're going to examine it. And we're going to see that God is not just a God of the Jews only, but a God for everybody, and that salvation is free to every person, every person, no matter what your religious beliefs are, not the color of your skin, uh, it's open to anybody who will receive it. And Paul comes against not the law, because God gave the law. But Paul comes against the way that the law had been twisted and turned to serve man. And man was so guilty of that. Man mm -hmm. wanted to just, well, let's do this. Let's change it. Let's bend it a little bit. And then let me say this, praise God. Through the centuries, 2,000 years, the devil has bent the word of God so far a way that it's difficult for people to grasp in today's society. Another way of putting it, too, he has watered it down. Yes, he has. I mean, it is, you know how a cup of coffee, you put so much water in it, and it just loses its flavor, that's loses true. its taste. That's, you know, you get true. to where you don't Praise even God. want it. That's the way the devil's done the Bible. Uh, and there are cases where people didn't even put coffee in their coffee. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Let's not like go the there. Tea, Let's not God. go there. <laughs> but uh, think about it this way: uh, when you bend a twig, it grows the way it was bent. If you were to mark a trail in years ago and you bend a twig to indicate the direction that you were going, that twig would follow that throughout its life. Hmm, okay. So no matter 50 years later, when you went back into that same woods, you would, you would look and there would be a limb that was pointed out. It might be this big now on a big oak tree and it might be 20 feet in the air, but it's there and it has still that way. And that's the way life is. However you bend that twig, that's hmm. the way you grow. Your life, yeah. And that's what Satan has found that out. I mean, he realizes if he can bend you, mm. then that's the way you'll stay. Hmm. Praise God. But God wants us to straighten up and follow him. Praise God. Get rid of that bend, praise God, and go straight up. Now, let's begin in chapter 1, praise God, hmm. and verse 1. Praise God. Now, I'm going to ask, uh, praise our sister Carolyn, if you would begin to read there. All right, and just stop me when you. Yeah, uh, and we're just gonna, some. as a thought comes to us, we're All just right. gonna, we're just gonna go with it. Praise All God. Right. One and one. 
Paul, a servant of Jesus Christ, called to be an apostle, separated unto the gospel of God. Let's stop. <laughs> oh, that didn't take much. <laughs> Notice what Paul says. Yeah. Paul, what? A servant, servant yes. of Jesus Christ. Now, of course, we don't like to use the term servant anymore. They talk about rich people having servants. Well, what is a servant? Uh, that's uh, someone who does someone else's bidding. That's, that's it. me. Yeah. Uh, when you, anybody that goes to work on any kind of a job is a servant to that job. They call it an employee, but yeah, actually you, it's yeah. a servant. See, and that's what I'm talking about. You may be the vice president. You may be the supervisor, mm -hmm. but you are still a servant and you are still subject to whatever the boss yes. wants you to do. Yes. So we are all, <laughs> a lot of people don't like to admit this, but we're all servants to somebody or something. Yes. And even the people who own the big businesses and all are, are servants to their councils, to their boards. Uh, even people who have their own business are servants mm -hmm. to the government. Mm -hmm. uh, taxes. We have laws. So everybody, there is nobody that is not a servant. The problem comes in saying, I am not. <laughs> or whose servant you choose to be. Yeah. Jesus, God said you're either for me or against me. That's right. Praise God. Come on. So that's it. So if you're not a servant for the Lord, you are. That's right. Whether you realize it or not, a servant for the devil. That's right. That's very good. Yeah. That's very good. You, you, either, you can't serve two masters. And you're one or the other. There's no in between. There's no middle ground. God, Jesus says something about being lukewarm. But it, it, those are out. And see, the lukewarmness is, is, is condemned in Revelation mm -hmm. because it says you're lukewarm. And because you're lukewarm, I'll spit you out of my mouth. I'll so it's spew you out of my either mouth. Either or, there's no middle. Yeah, so that's, that's it. That's what, what Carolyn is saying is true. There is no middle ground. And the church today is trying to walk the fence rope. There they're is no to, fence, really. There is no fence, but they're trying to say there they is. They say there is. They want to straddle it. That's it. And, and you there's no fence to straddle. That's it. I like that, Sister Karen. Now, yeah, it's true. They want to put that fence there. You are a servant of God. Mm -hmm. Or you're not. Or you are a servant of the devil. That's it. One of the two. And Praise the fence God. that they, uh, like you say, they're always wanting to put a fence there, but there's no fence that's there. That's right. Yeah, that's, very, that's very good. Praise yeah. God. And see, what Paul is emphasizing here, above all things, is who he is and what he is. Paul, a servant of Jesus Christ. He's proud to say that. Yes. Did you notice that? Called to be an apostle separated unto the gospel of God. Mm. I, I have been called and I have chosen to be a servant of the Most High God mm. through Christ Jesus. You see, that's the decision we have to make yes. as individuals. Who are you going to serve? Praise God. As for me and my house, we, we have made a decision to be servants of God. Amen. Yes. And see, that's the decision each and every one out there right now that's hearing my voice. You have got to make that decision. Right now is a good time to do it. That's right. You, that today is the day of the Lord. This may You may may not be here by the time this show's over with. That's true. We don't know. We have friends that we get emails from, uh, Facebook things from on a daily basis of people who were walking around and five minutes later were Gone. on their way to an emergency room or had passed. So it's up to who are you going to choose you this day? That's right. That's choose what the Bible this says. Day. That's what Paul's saying. I chose. I chose to be who I am now. Mm. And each of us has to make that decision. There, there's no fence, like Sister Carolyn said. There, there's no straddling a fence, a non-existent fence. You are the one who makes that decision. And you, we're going to teach you faith or try to attempt to so that you make a good decision 
and the only good decision is for the Christ right one. Jesus. <laughs> yes, praise God. Okay, uh, go ahead, Sister Carolyn. I'll, we'll get okay, to verse two. stop me anytime. <laughs> Which he had promised afore by his prophets in the Holy Scriptures. Go ahead. Concerning his son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, which was made of the seed of David according to the flesh. Okay, go ahead. We're going to get and, to a period here okay. in a minute. And declared to be the Son of God with power according to the spirit of, the, of holiness by the resurrection from the dead, by whom we have received grace and apostleship for obedience to the faith among all nations for his name, among whom are ye also the called of Jesus Christ. Let's we'll stop right there. Praise okay. God. This is, there's so much here. Praise God. I love this. Uh, which he had promised before. In other words, Jesus Christ was spoken of in the Old Testament. All the old prophets, the, the uh, people who were alive and knew God and talked of the soon coming Son of God to help us. As it says in verse 3, the promises literally in, from verse 2, the promises concerning his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Now remember, he's writing this to a, yes. to a group of believers. Mm -hmm. he's, the, Jesus Christ is our Lord. Yes. Yours and mine. Why? Because we share the same belief. Yes. So he's talking to our Lord, Jesus Christ, who? Which was made of the seed of David according to the flesh. So we celebrate Christmas, praise God, because that... Jesus was a promise to the prophets of the Old Testament and the lineage. I'd let, people say, man, how come they got all those uh, uh, begats? Well, when you read the begats, be, what the begats are a family tree to prove to you through history, through archaeology, through all of these things, that all of these people were real people and they, the lineage comes down to Christ Jesus on both sides. And so we have to understand that it is real. Jesus Christ is real. Well, well, this born of a virgin. Well, listen, that's nothing. <coughs> I don't have any difficulty with that whatsoever because I believe that a God who created this entire universe with a thought uh, the mm. birth uh, uh, through a virgin is nothing. It's true. I mean, with, to us, it's, well, I don't understand that. Well, God does. Praise God. But see, we receive that by faith. That's right. Because I believe God is able. See, faith is so important because it's like you use faith when you know it's beyond your capability to oh, understand yeah. or to acknowledge. That's when you say, okay, i got to have faith in this. That's right. And, that's, and stand on it. Stand on it. That's it. Praise God. So yeah. he goes on and he says, and notice this, not only Jesus was the seed of David and declared to be the son of God, mm. and here is so important, with power according to the spirit of holiness or according to the Holy Spirit by the resurrection from the dead, proven. 500 people saw Christ after he came up out of the tomb. That's awesome. People, a lot proof, of people don't realize yeah, that. Proof positive. I mean, it's in history. It's declared. I mean, you can find the books and read them. They swore. Yes, we saw him. Not only those 500, but the apostles gathered together in fear, I might add. Yeah. And when Jesus appeared to them, Wow. Well, does it take faith to believe that? Yes, it does. But let me say this. It's the kind of faith that gives you salvation. Belief, how can you possibly believe in Santa Claus or an Easter bunny and not, and not be able to comprehend that God is able to do whatever it is that's necessary to be done? <clears throat> but see, right. people have faith 
in an Easter bunny. It's something that's obviously not true. That's true. You know, I have a lot an of Easter bunny. Come on. Yeah, I have a lot of difficulty anyway with talking animals in this day and age. Praise <laughs> yeah. God. And the Lord tells us to stay away from those things. Praise yeah, God. Yeah, He does. But anyway, the Holy Spirit proves to us that Jesus Christ is the Son of God with power because mm -hmm. He overcame death. Yes. Wow, we're getting running out of time. By whom we all, every believing Christian, received grace and apostleship. Why oh. did we receive grace? Why did we receive being apostles? Oh, hello. Listen to what he says. For obedience to the faith among all nations for his, his name. name. Amen. So, each and every one of us who believe has received grace, not law, grace, and, what's that word? Apostleship. Apostleship. You, as a believing Christian, are saved by grace and have the power that Paul had as an apostle for Christ. Mm -hmm. Do I believe that? Yes. Yes, I do. Praise God. It, well, I have to. It's in black and white That's in the Word right. of God. Praise God. Well, we're going to continue with this later, uh, next program and all, and just keep following us. And remember, praise God, these we're going straight from the Bible, verse by verse. We're going to, not every verse, yeah. but praise God, we're going to do our best. I know you're good on this teaching, but you brought up something, and I'm, I've got just a few seconds left. Something y'all think about. Where did the Jews come from? What made a Jew a Jew? Who was the first Jew here? Yeah, we talked about that too. That's that is so good. I wish yeah. we brought it up earlier. Yeah, we'll we'll bring it up next time. We will when we get this. That's well, interesting. Yeah, and remember this: you, you shall, shall know, know the truth, truth and the truth, truth will make, make you free. free. God, God bless. bless. You. Merry Christmas. Yes, Merry Christmas, and we'll see you next week. Thank you. Chance to be all that I can be.